Hey, hey, everyone. What's up? What's up? How you doing? How you doing? Welcome. Welcome to today's LS. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you're streaming from. I'll come to today's LS. How you doing, everyone? Dan KK, I see you every time and then you're here. You never miss any live stream. Simply not what's up. How you doing? I see you. I'm on Ampire Butes. I see you. How you doing? Welcome to this LS. Guys, thanks so much for coming through. And today, as you already see the title, we have an interesting topic. We're talking about mistakes that you might be committing while trying to lose weight. So please just stay locked here. Not going anywhere, not going anywhere. If you just join us in the house, please remember to give up. Uh, remember to give us a thumbs up. Remember to ask any questions that you feel want to ask about weight loss, fitness, how to eat, or anything health related. I'm willing to answer for you. Now, to what's up? Um, you're saying I am doing really great, and you, oh, I'm fabulous. It's been raining here in Bara a little bit, just um, a chilly evening weather. But regardless, we are moving. So guys, if you're in a position to share me out, share me out to your friends so that we can have an amazing audience right here before we can get started. Because this topic, I mean, we shouldn't leave anyone behind. So meanwhile, if you can share me out, share me out wherever you come, share me out to your audience, our social media platform so that we can you know, get a good audience and start on our topic. But meanwhile, I give the first people in the house, you know, that people even who came before I, um, I went live, to ask any questions, any questions you feel like you want to ask me about weight loss and all that, so that I can answer before we can dive into our topic. So that's what I can pay you for coming so early on my area. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know here and I'll answer directed to you before we can dive into our topic. Ghana's to our to go. Wow, don't share people out. Mm, but we should learn, we should learn, we should learn and improve on these things. Mm, <clears throat> so simple saying you're fighting with a fat tummy. <laughs> Where did it come from? Lydia, what's up? How are you doing? Welcome to today's Ellis. I see you. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for coming through and stay rocked. Stay rocked here. Don't go anywhere. Call on your friends to come. Call all the family, the clan, the village to come through. And you know, we have an amazing time here together. So, simply not to, that's what we're going to be saying. Basically, 15 weight loss mistakes that you're, you're, that you're making, you know. I feel you, I feel everyone out there who is trying to lose weight, but might be doing such kind of mistakes and they are hindering your weight loss journey. So please, you need to keep locked here and that's what we are going to talk about. <laughs> so guys, if you can just give me a minute, let me just try to share myself out so that more people can join in before we can start on this topic because we really don't want to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Ah, you eat a little cafe jars. I see you. <laughs> I, first of all, you're, you're a cook, right? Um, you, I don't know, should I call your channel a cooking channel or how should I call it? So, the fact that you cook for yourself, do you eat like a thief? <laughs> oh my God. So, you cook for yourself. And you eat what you cook. I feel you. Um, <clears throat> so KFC, Cafe Java's food, um, it's just expensive for nothing. There's nothing that um, I can go to buy at Cafe Java's for what? Um, maybe just once in a weekend when I just want to go there and just enjoy my favorite foods, but um, it should be once in a while. You shouldn't capitalize on that. So if if you still if you're in position to share me out, please please do. Oh, cooking channel beauty dy. 
Oh, I see, I see. I see that. Mm -hmm. You don't eat what I. You don't eat what you cook for yourself. The young media. <clears throat> mm, mm, I see you, bro. What's up? You're saying when you talk about weight loss, the cattle herders who drink raw milk don't understand you. They have plus size women, and being tiny is a disgrace. <laughs> um, actually, young media, you're right. So I was talking to some um, some lady. Um, she's a human, so she was telling me that she actually wants to gain some weight. So she was asking me. What can I eat to gain some weight? Apparently, she looks pretty in shape, but she thinks in a society she's not recognized because she looks a little bit skinny. And yet she's not skinny. She actually, she actually looks so much better. To me, I saw her, she has a small waist. You know, she doesn't have a lot of fat on her arms. She looks pretty okay, but she's telling me, I want to gain weight. People that are telling me, why am I not gaining weight? So she feels like she's negative in a society because she's not gaining weight. So there's some there are some clients who which you really think, or sometimes you really think that you must look um 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 there's some clients which you really think that you must look big, you must have some fresh, some fat on you for people to just appreciate you. And yet there are some others who think, you know, just being a model, being um having that skinny. Skinny body is the way to go for a girl, but this one, she came to me asking, what can I eat to gain some fat, to gain some weight? So I was kind of shocked. I was like, other people are struggling to lose weight before you want to gain weight. I was like, really? So basically, some do, some do. So some Bahimam friends, women, they, they don't understand you, the young media. I understand what you're saying. They actually won't understand what I'm saying. So simply saying, how come I'm not seeing that message that you're reading? It's there. It's there. It's there. <clears throat> so guys, I understand everyone out there, they want to lose weight, they want to have that perfect body, they want to gain some fresh on their bodies. But dude, girlfriend, I feel you. I know you might be doing everything right, but you're not seeing results. So there could be some mistakes that you're actually committing that are stopping you from either seeing results, either you're getting results, but you think that's what not you're supposed to get. Oh, okay, it's okay, simply natural. Go and rest, go and rest and wake up when you're fresh. You're going to still find us here. You're going to still find us, find us here. But thank you for checking on me. So basically, you're doing so many mistakes, and if you corrected some of these mistakes, then your weight loss journey would just be exponential like this, not having this and this and this, you know? So that's what I'm going to focus on on this LS today. I want to explain these mistakes. If you, still, if you haven't started your journey, then please don't commit these mistakes. If you ever started your journey and you find you're having some of these mistakes, please, iron them out, and then get on the proper path. So, there are going to be basically 10 or 12. I think there are 12 mistakes. One, you are focusing on the weight scale. I mean, every day, every morning, you weigh yourself to see your progress. Unfortunately, every time you weigh yourself, there's no reduction in your pounds or in your kilograms. And you're like, I'm doing everything right, so why am I not getting results? That's because you don't see any change from the scale. So, please, there are some things that happen when you start losing weight. For example, <clears throat> when you're losing weight and at the same time you're exercising, you're building muscle. And of course, muscle is heavy. And that's what I'm saying. So however much you're losing fat mass, but you're gaining some muscle. So there's something we call body recomposition. 
where you're losing fat at the same time building muscle. Especially it happens for beginners a lot, if you're a beginner. So you may think you're not losing fat, but you're actually losing fat mass and building muscle at the same time. So if you focus on the scale weight, if you focus on the scale weight, trust me, you're going to get demotivated, you're going to lose all the morale, and you will end up you know, quitting the weight loss program. So what I advise you is please, don't focus on that. Then number two, your weight can fluctuate every day. One, what makes it fluctuate? It depends on the food that you have taken. It depends on the food that you have taken, some undigested food that you have taken that is still getting digested. So sometimes if you weigh yourself daily, when you've taken it, for example, you are hydrated all the time, you've taken some heavy lunch or heavy breakfast, of course, your weight is not going to fluctuate much. So... <clears throat> These are, th these are some of the things that you need to consider. So one, fluid intake. Two, exercise. So when you're exercising, at the same time, you're losing fat. So you may not see that on the scale. So sometimes I always advise my clients, the best way you can tell that you're losing fat, please, one, take pictures. Text, for example, you can say, I'm going to start a weight loss program or a weight loss journey. So... When you start, when, uh, for example, it's the beginning of the month, take that picture in your mirror, keep it. At the end of the month, come back and take another picture. If there is a difference, trust me, you are losing fat mass, despite the figure that you're seeing on the scale. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. It is the African way. Nico, what's up? How are you doing? You're not late. You've just started a few minutes in the LS. Then in num number two, what I always advise my clients to do is measure your abdominal girth. For example, if your focus is to lose um, abdominal fat, because we said there's nothing like spot fat reduction. If you start losing fat, you're going to lose fat the entire body. So measure your abdominal girth using a tape measure. A tape measure. So after that, for example, if after like every month, keep measuring yourself. If you're seeing progress, if you were 35 centimeters this month, and next month you're 30, despite a no change on your, on your scale, I mean, weight keeping constant, then you're actually losing weight. And you'll be able to see this by measuring yourself, by looking at yourself in the mirror every time and then by not focusing on weighing yourself. So that's one mistake that most people commit. So please, can you stop focusing on what you're seeing on the scale? Focus on your pictures, focus on, focus on your clothes. If you are fat, no, by that time, clothes were tight, and now clothes are coming loose a little bit. So trust me, you're losing fat, you're losing weight, but don't focus on the figure that you're seeing on the scale. Mm. I understand it in the African way, I understand. So that's mistake number one. But also, <clears throat> most people, they tend to hold on so much water. So you must be losing fat mass, but then there's that water weight that you're holding on to. So it doesn't, doesn't automatically mean that when you're losing fat, you're losing water as well. So some people tend to hold on so much water, which makes their figure on the scale keep constant. So please do not focus on that scale. But also when it comes to ladies, the higher the estrogen, when you have a lot of estrogen saturating, then you're holding on to so much water, which will make you, keep thinking that you're actually losing weight if your focus is on the figure that you're seeing on the scale every morning. So please, I advise you, if you're to weigh yourself, maybe I weigh yourself after every month, but I would advise you, please focus on your pictures, focus on how tight your clothes were, focus on uh, uh, measuring your abdominal gut instead of focusing on the figure that you're seeing on the weight. So I still have four amazing people in the house. What's up? How are you doing? If you have any questions, please let me know in the chat. And that's what I'm here to keep answering for you. Mm -hmm. It's in the African way. Thanks for coming through. Please, you're not late. You're not late. Trust me. You're not late. We just started 14 minutes into the LS. So that's mistake number one. Mm -hmm. Mistake number two that most people commit is they are either eating too many calories or they are eating few calories. 
So you're either eating too much or eating too low. So of, of course, we have already said this on this channel, I mean, several times. I don't know how, how you want me to stress this, but for you to lose weight, you must be in a caloric deficit. So if you're ever in a caloric surplus, my friend, forget about fat loss. So some people think they're actually eating less, but I'll tell you that um, what happens to your body when you, eat, when you eat less calories than you're supposed to eat. I understand you're supposed to be in a caloric deficit, but please, you do not need to do it unhealthy. There's a healthier way of going into a caloric deficit. But then some people, for example, in our generation right now, most people eat a lot. People are eating so many calories. And for you to lose weight, you need to, lose, um, you need to be in a caloric deficit. So one, for you to lose just one pound of weight, you know, one kilogram is about 2.2 pounds. So for you to just lose one pound, of weight, you need to be in a deficit of 3,500 calories per week. So you can, if to, lose, um, to lose weight healthier, you, you need to just be losing about one pound per week. And to lose that one pound per week, you need about, um, you need about 3,500 calories deficit. So if your maintenance calories, for example, is... Um, let me see, in a week, it's about maybe 10,000 calories. So you need to subtract 3,500 for you to start losing a single pound of weight per week. So per day, you need to be in a deficit of about 500 calories on you. So if your maintenance calories is about 2,500 calories or 2,000 calories, you need to subtract 500 from that so that in seven days, you've made 3,500 calories which will make you lose about one pound of weight. But this one varies from person to person. Some people will be in a 2,500 calorie deficit in a week and they will lose that one pound of weight. But um, 3,500 calories is what has been researched about and it's what is, looks to be effective for most people. So if you're eating less, for example, if you're eating less than... Um, um, more than 500 calories less. For example, if your maintenance calories is about 2,000 um, calories and then you're eating just 1,000 calories or 500 calories, I mean, your body is not stupid. Your body will recognize that you're starving it. And what it does is it will tend to slow down your metabolism. And when your metabolism slows down, what does that one mean is your fat loss journey has stopped. So when your metabolism is down, then the slower you are losing fat, right? Or losing weight. So please, even when you try to eat in a calorie deficit, you do not need to starve yourself. So it's very important that you people, you start calculating calories, you start knowing how much you're taking in, how much you're supposed to take in. If you really need us to discuss that, we can do it in another live stream. Please let me know in the chat so that I can schedule for that live stream and I come and teach you how to calculate your total calories that you're supposed to be consuming per day. The yeah, media is saying, as in Rwanda before the pandemic, you can hardly find a fat person cross over to Uganda. <laughs> Why that? Why that? Are they restricted to cross to Uganda or people are just skinny naturally? Um, I think for Rwandans, it's a little bit genetic. It's a little bit genetic. Most of them, they're just tall. But um, I told you there's something we call toffee where you're actually thin outside and you're fat inside. And that's actually very, very terrible. So in one of the areas, I'll discuss why that one is actually very bad. So it doesn't mean that actually one ones are healthy because they look skinny. No, it doesn't mean that. Hmm. T and KK, what's up? What's up, KK? How are you doing? Hope Tia is doing well. So that's mistake number two that most people are committing. You're either eating too little or you're eating more than enough. Um, someone has just joined. Joy Akatukunda Williams, what's up? Hi, doing, darling. Welcome to today's LS9 Ijafolo team. What's up? Hi, doing. I see you. Welcome. So please, 
you need to make sure that you're not eating too many calories and you're not eating, you're not eating too less. So focus on being a deficit of 500 calories per day for you to lose weight the healthier way. So that's mistake number two that most people commit. Eating too many calories or they are eating too little. So too little will slow down your metabolism, but also a lot will keep you in a surplus, which will make it hard for you to lose weight because to lose weight you must be in a deficit. Your body must detect that actually you're giving it less for it to start burning some fat. Can edit what's up. Hi, doing, bro. I see you. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for coming through. Um... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks so much for coming through. I appreciate you. Then mistake number three that most people do is not exercising or exercising too much. Mistake number three, you're either not exercising or you're exercising a lot. So this is what happens. Exercise is very, very important because when you start losing fat, you're most definitely going to lose some muscle mass as well. So for you to maintain that muscle mass, you actually need to do some exercise. First of all, exercise builds some muscle, but also muscle is um, highly metabolically active. I mean, when you have a lot of muscle mass on your body, then your metabolism is all the way up to the roof. So some people, when they start their weight loss journey, they are eating a deficit, then they stop exercising, and then now they start losing fat. At the same time, they are losing muscle. So losing muscle is terrible for you. Your metabolism is going to slow down for that, and you'll find it very, very hard to even lose more fat. And also, you feel weak all the time. Your energy is going to go down, and you will basically hate the whole fat loss process. Hey, Hasef Trasse UG, what's up? How are you doing, sweetheart? I see you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming for my LS today. Thanks for sparing some time for me to come on my live stream. So please, you need to incorporate some exercise. Um, Africanista with Emma, what's up? How are you doing? Why I say, why I say, bro? So you need to incorporate some exercise in your routine to maintain your muscle mass or build some muscle mass. So as you lose fat, you're building some muscle so that you can keep yourself in a definition, you can put yourself, you can put on some muscle mass that is metabolically active. And the more your metabolism is, the more fat that you're going to burn. So please do not neglect exercise. But please, doesn't mean that you have to exercise all the time, every minute, and then you need to focus on some few things here. For example, number one, stress comes as a result of exercise. I'm being shy on what's up, how are you doing? I see you, I see you, thanks for coming. Um, exercise too much is, is bad for you. Exercising too much is really, really bad for you. So sometimes what happens is exercise puts your body on stress because a lot of cortisol to be released in your bloodstream. And of course, cortisol is a stress hormone. And you, the moment your body is on stress, then forget about fat loss. Forget about fat loss, my friend. So you don't have to exercise all the time, but you need to schedule, for example, three to four times per week, um, short durations, for just maintaining your muscle mass for you, <clears throat> for you to build on some muscle so that you don't have all that muscle wasted away. So you basically fat, but then when you lose all the fat, you become out of, uh, out of shape. So... However much you want to lose some fat, please, you want to build some muscle as well. God, glory, happy kitchen, what's up? How are you doing? I see you. Thanks for coming to my live stream. I appreciate you so much. Thanks for coming. So as you can see um, from the title of the, of the LS today, we are talking about 50, um, 12 weight loss mistakes that most people do that are hindering their weight loss success. So... Either you want to start losing weight, you need to avoid these mistakes. Either you're already on the journey, but you need to avoid such kind of mistakes. So we already covered three, and we're saying number one is focusing on the figure that you're seeing on your weight scale. Number two, you're either eating a lot or you're eating little. Number three is 
not exercising or exercising too much. And we're saying exercising too much is very bad because it puts your body on stress. And of course, when you have a lot of cortisol saturating in your yeah. bloodstream, it's going to bring all the sugar into the blood and then that sugar will end up being converted into fat and all the, your efforts will be put to waste. So please, 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 you don't need to exercise too much. Rashid Freestyle, what's up? What's up? Hi, doing Brad. Hi, doing Brad. I see you. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for coming through. Emma 25 Sickness. Um, <laughs> Emma 25 Fitness, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Hi, doing. You and Sharon, you're having some jazz. I understand. I understand. I understand. So please, do not exercise a lot, but you have to exercise. You have to have some form of, some form of exercise at the end of that day. Because when you start losing fat and there's nothing that you're doing about exercise, you're going to lose all the fat, you're going to lose some ma little muscle that you have along with the fat, and you'll be out of shape completely. You understand what I'm saying? But on top of that, um, your metabolism kind of slows down because when you have some muscle on you, your metabolism is over the roof. And also, of course, when you put on some muscle, you need to maintain that muscle. So at the end of the day, Muscle is metabolically active compared to fat. So please, you need to incorporate some exercise in your routine. Mm. <laughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. So thanks guys for coming through. Thanks guys for coming through. So number four on the list is eating low fat foods or dirty foods or processed foods. So basically processed foods, yes, you might be thinking that you're exercising too much and you're going to lose weight. By the moment you come back from gym or from a fitness club, and then what you're depending on is you're eating all these processed foods, processed dairy products. What happens with those foods is they contain a lot of calories. They contain a lot of calories, guys. So for you to eat such kind of foods, and I understand you'd be like, Yes, I want to lose some fat, so I have to eat low dirty fats. First of all, I've already said this. The reason you're fat is not because you ate a lot of fat. It's just because you ate a lot of sugar that was converted into fat. So most of these processed um, low dirty foods, they contain a lot of sugar. They contain a lot of sugar. They are loaded with lots of sugar. So please, 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 do not focus on such kind of foods. Just cut them away from your dirty and then... Replace them with minimally processed foods, replace them with nutritious foods, whole foods, plant-based, and a few animal-based foods. So actually, when you're losing fat, you need to eat high-fat foods. But we have essential fats and we have the bad fats. So you need to focus on eating the essential fats or the good fats. And the good fats are basically omega-3 fatty acids. And where can we find this? Mostly can find them in fish, that is salmon, if you can get some of it, that's where you're going to find the best fats. If you can find them in avocados, avocados, I mean, they're like the best, the best, the best healthy fats that I've ever seen in this world. And most of you just ignore that avoc, but trust me, it has the healthiest fats ever. I mean, talk about stuff like coconut oil, talk about stuff like olive oil, so those are the fats you actually need to be eating. You need to focus on such kind of foods and then leave the processed foods alone. Mm. And also the problem with processed foods, guys, is um, these foods, they have had all the starch removed. So they are basically empty calories. These are foods that your body does not recognize. These are foods that even if you take them the whole day, you still feel hungry. So... These are the foods that basically cause an, a sugar insulin crash in your body and your body keeps telling you you want to starve. You are starving all the time. Can you keep eating something? Can you keep eating something? So that's the problem with such kind of foods. So on the contrast, high fat foods, they are more feeding. When, for example, eat your ovies, your salmon, such kind of foods, trust me, you're going to feel full all the time. You're going to eat less, of course, which will influence your caloric deficit and you end up losing weight in the wrong run. So please do not focus on eating low dirty foods, instead eating on, uh, focus on eating high fat foods. Because I've already told you on this channel that 
however much you want to lose fat, but you still need fat, but you need a healthy fat. Because um, some people would think would tell you cholesterol is bad, but your body cannot work without cholesterol. You still need some cholesterol. Actually, your body produces more cholesterol than you, than you actually think. Your liver produces a lot of cholesterol than you actually think. So it's more than what you take actually. So please do not shy away from taking healthy fats, right? So do not focus on taking low dirty fats, focus on taking high fat foods, but they must be healthy. So focus on, um, you're saying big things coming. Wow, I like that. Can get in then dive. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff is coming. So please focus, focus on high fatty foods, but high essential fats, not the bad fats. The bad fats, most of them, they come from animals. So if you want good fats, focus on plant fats, plant-based fats, and focus on fish as well. All those ones, they have good, good, good fats. Mm, I still have some amazing people in the house. I see you guys. If you're still in the house, let me know that you're in the house. Bro, girl, I need to give you a shout out. I need to give you a shout out. I need to give you a shout out. So number five, number five on the list is you're not eating enough protein. You're basically eating little protein. So people, what I want to tell you is protein is basically your body building food. Your body building food is basically protein. So if you want to lose fat, if you want to build muscle, you need to be taking adequate protein. And there's one I mentioned on this time that the adequate protein, for example, your RDA, your diet allowance every day, you, someone who's not even exercising, someone who's just minding their business every day, should be eating about 0.8 grams of protein per kg per day. But then someone who is doing some activity of exercise and you want to add some muscle on you, you need to be eating about 0.8 or sometimes one gram of protein per pound of body weight to 1.4 grams. Um, fitness study training, what's up, bro? Hi, doing welcome to my LS. Welcome to this LS. So we're actually basically on our fifth point, but I'll, of course I'll go back and recap for you everything so that you can be up to speed with us. So protein, first of all, um, protein is, um, um, we call it, um, it has a lot of high satiety mechanism. Protein activates your satiety mechanism compared to all other foods. I mean, if you eat protein, the hormones that tell you to stop eating, they are activated very, very fast. That's why when you're, at your, when you're at the party or a wedding or anywhere and you're eating a lot of protein foods, what basically happens is you actually won't eat a lot because whatever you're eating in and it's protein, it is telling your body, please, this is enough. Can you tell this guy to stop eating? That's number one. If you're eating a lot of protein, then you will surely get full all the time, you'll be full all the time, you'll get satisfied very fast, which means you're going to eat less. So eating less will create a calorie deficit and we see results. But on top of that, protein will tend to maintain your muscle mass. Since amino acids um, is basically the best component of your muscles, is what builds your body, which means you're losing weight, I mean fat, but sparing your muscle. But to maintain your muscle, you need protein, my brother, my sister, you need to be eating protein. But also protein um, is very, very hard to digest. So your body basically needs a lot of calories to digest protein. Actually, 20 to 35% of the calories you eat go back to digesting protein. So which means you're basically eating calories to break down calories. So if you're burning a lot of calories while digesting the food, of course you're creating a caloric deficit. So why not focus on the protein? I know Protein is basically ex expensive. Some people find it hard to, you know, get adequate protein. Even I myself, I find it hard to get the adequate protein that I want, but I try my level best. I try, I try. So please, first of all, proteins, they'll keep you full all the time. They'll maintain your muscle mass. But on top of that, 
they have a high thermic effect. I mean, your body needs to use a lot of calories to digest proteins, get amino acids out of it, and get all those acids, amino acids to go to your muscles to help you build muscles and keep your muscle. So if you're eating a little protein, then trust me, it will be hard for you to even create a calorie deficit because you'll be hungry all the time and you want to be eating all the time. Trust me, you find it hard to lose weight. So please start capitalizing on protein. So foods that, that have a lot of protein that you need to focus on, focus on plant-based protein, for example, the blacks of broccoli. Broccoli is a high protein source. Focus on beans. This, this can be either pintos, kidney beans, and all that stuff. You understand what I'm saying? Then focus on salmon. Salmon is very, very high in protein. But if you're unable to get all that, there's some supplements on the market, of course. I mean, if you can able to get your whey protein, that has been researched, it is very effective, it is very healthy. You can get whey protein, have that. If you can get your casein, have that. If you can get your soy, have that. If you're unable to get it from the diet, focus on getting it from supplements. And all these are available online. So you can just go online and shop all these healthy protein supplements. Mm -hmm. So protein is very, very important. You can't write it away. So stuff like soya beans, stuff like bees, stuff like, it's a lot, it's a lot. There are so many protein sources out there that you can make choices from. Okay, Kenneth, so saying I'll say goodbye now. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate you, bro. Thanks for passing by. I see you, I see you. Thanks for passing by. Hey, being Sharon, I know come out. Mm. Then mistake number six is you're not eating enough fiber. You're not eating enough fiber containing foods. On this channel, I've talked fiber like I don't know like how many times. But if you really want to lose weight, you need to focus on eating foods that contain a lot of fiber, guys. And a lot of fiber is basically in plant-based foods. Your leafy greens, your leafy vegetables, trust me, trust me, you need to focus on those. So basically, when you eat a lot of fiber, they, um, they form something like a gel in your intestinal tract, and that gel keeps you full all the time. That gel um, stops the absorption of some calories. That's why a lot of vegetables, which contain a lot of fiber, they contain some calories, but the calories are few. Even the few calories which are there, they will be limited to get absorbed by the what? By the, by the fiber, or that gel that is formed by the fiber. But on top of that, fiber is good for you because it, it feeds your gut, um, your gut microbiome. I mean, there's a lot that happens in the intestinal tract. You have the good bacteria that is basically it's basically in your intestines. And this bacteria, it needs to eat for it to keep surviving. So where does it feed? It feeds on your fiber. So it feeds on your fiber, but what does it give you? It gives you an excellent glutamic acid, which helps in the absorption of your calories. So you need to feed the bacteria for the bacteria to help you. So if you're not eating fiber, then you're going to be absorbing a lot of calories and to be hard for you to create a caloric deficit. So please start incorporating a lot of foods that contain fiber in your diet. All vegetables, Fruits, but of course not juices. I mean fruits, whole fruits. I mean leafy greens. All of them contain fiber. So please eat, 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 eat enough fiber. If you're not eating enough fiber, you'll find it losing weight. Mm. If you're still in the house, please say something, say something, say something, say something, and ask me any questions. Leave around the topic, ask me any questions that you want to to know about fitness, health, you know, you basically, basically on this channel is going to help you achieve your health goals, your body goals, your fitness goals. So you're free to ask any, any, any question. Can edits, are you still in the house? Can edits, are you still in the house? 
fitness study training, what's up, being Sean, what's up, MI256 Fitness, what's up, how are you doing, how are you doing? So we are at our number seven. We're at our number seven. Hope you guys, you have a pen where you're writing so that you don't forget about all this. Number seven is why are you not lifting weights? Guys, start lifting some weights. If you can't do the weights, do some any form of strength training. It will be calisthenics, that is body weight training but you need to be doing some strength training in your routine. So you need, <clears throat> so this will help you of course build muscle and I've already said, when you have so much muscle on you, the more active, metabolically active you are, and the more you'll be able to, the more, <clears throat> the, the easier it will be for you to lose weight. I mean, you lose weight, you lose fat as you replace it with muscle for you to just create some definition. Get what I'm saying? So if you simply lose weight and then you have no muscle mass on you, trust me, first of all, yourself, you'll be looking out of shape, but on top of that, your metabolism will kind of slow down. So you reach at a point where your fat loss journey will stall. So please, please focus on strength training, incorporate it in your routine. This can be about three times per week, you don't need to be hitting gym seven times. That's not really necessary. So just focus on doing some weights about three times per week. Just keep your muscles metabolically active. Just add some muscle on your, on your body as you lose fat, what you call body recomposition. And this one, if you're a beginner, this one will be much easier for you. Trust me. So please, please start lifting some weights start lifting some weights you'll get incredible results mm -hmm. who else is in the house who else has joined us if you're still in the house please let me know let me know that you in the house let me know that you're in the house so that we can grind together i still have four amazing people in the house so going to number eight, number eight is you're overestimating the number of calories you burn during exercise. I've said that, yes, exercise is very important. Exercise is very important. But some people tend to, <clears throat> to think that exercise helps you burn a ton of calories. And guys, that's not the fact. Yes, you need to exercise, but don't think exercise is going to burn all the calories that you're taking in. If you're eating a lot and you think you're going to be burning it um, when you're exercising, then you're getting it wrong. So please, do some exercise, but do not think that exercise is going to burn all the calories. It's going to burn a ton of calories out there that you put in a caloric deficit. That's why you shouldn't die exercising. As much as you try to do exercising, exercise for some other reasons. First, first of all, exercise does not burn fat. Exercise builds muscle, right? But also burns calories. They are gonna bless K, what's up? Hi, doing welcome to my LS, welcome to my LS. We're just 40 minutes in the LS, but never mind, you are here. So guys, do not think that you're burning tons of calories while exercising. That's why most people think you think you've gone on a treadmill for 30 to one for 30 minutes to one hour and you've you know you've burned out of calories. Not really. So if you're still taking in a, um, a lot and then you think you're going to burn it out, then it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for you. So please, yes, exercise, but do not put in your mind that. I'm burning a lot of calories while exercising. Yes, you're burning some calories. I agree to that. But it's not what you think. So please focus on, put all the focus on the calories that you're taking in rather than the calories that you're burning while exercising. Hope that makes some sense. Right? So please do not overestimate the number of calories 
that you are burning during exercise, right? So if you've been committing that mistake, think that I'll go after exercising, eat like a thief, and then come back and burn all these calories, I mean, you are lying yourself. You are lying yourself. You're not actually burning what you think. You can imagine how many burpees you need to do to burn about 2,000 calories, I mean, about 1,000 calories. You can imagine that intensity that you need to use for it to burn about 1,000 calories. So instead of, you know, pushing yourself to the limits to the on the side of exercise, do not take in a lot of calories and trust me, everything will come easily. So please do not overestimate the number of calories that you are taking. Hmm, which number are we on? We are number nine or number 10. The other reason is, another mistake that you're committing is you're not tracking what you eat in any way. And Briske, thanks for sharing me out. Thanks for sharing me out. I appreciate you. I appreciate you beyond measure. So for you, you're eating, but you're simply eating. You do not, you do not track what you're eating in any way and you want to lose weight. It's going to be hard for you. You really need to start tracking some calories that you're taking in. And this is simple. There are so many online apps. There are so many online websites that will just tell you to just enter your demographics, you know, enter your, 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 your age, your head, how active you are. And they tell the number of exercises, the, the number of calories that you need to be eating for you to lose fat, for you to build muscle, for you to maintain your weight. So why not go to these websites, why not go to your Apple store or your Google store, I mean, your Google Play store and get some of these apps for you to just track how many calories you should be taking in. Get what I'm saying? So it's very, very important that for you, you track what you're eating. You might be eating even healthy foods, but these healthy foods, they contain a lot of calories that you, um, that you actually do not need to lose weight. So you need less than what you're taking from the healthy foods for you to lose weight. Yes, you might be eating the healthier way, but you're eating a lot. You're not watching your portion sizes. So it's very, very important that you watch your portion sizes. And the best way to do this is you need to track your calories, basically. So you find these calories. And to be easier for you, everything that you need to just um, you know, eat, just put it on your, you have the app on your phone and you just, you know, scan this and they'll tell you how many calories are in this so that you can know in a day I'm eating 2,000 calories and that's what I need for me to start losing weight. So please, you might be eating healthy, but still you're eating too many calories. Mm -hmm. Another mistake that most people are committing, one, they are eating all the time, even when they are not hungry. So some people these days, they even have over seven meals per day. Just imagine seven meals a day. You understand? They don't eat just because they are hungry, but they are just snacking all the time because either food is available or they are told that you need to eat so many times for you to maintain your metabolism, which basically does not work that way. And on top of that, you never fulfill you never full, I mean, feel full. You're always hungry. You're eating all the time. And whatever you're eating is simply going to, you know, fat storage. So why not focus on eating a healthy, large meal when you're hungry and then leave it at that? When, it, when you're not hungry, just do not eat. It's not written anywhere that you must take breakfast when you're not hungry. But some people have it in their head that when they wake up, it's just a must of, it's a must, they must take breakfast. But it's not written anywhere. Some people, they just, they simply eat when they're not hungry. And when you're just doing that and you want to lose some weight, you're taking in so many calories and to be hard for you to create a deficit for you to start lose, losing weight or seeing some results. So please, please, do not eat when you're hungry, when you're not hungry. So not eating when you're not hungry is just very, very key to weight loss. So guys, it's, weight loss is not simple as you may think. Trust me, it's not simple as you may think. 
you might want to do some sacrifices here and there, but you have to get the results. So if you've been eating six times per day, even when you're not hungry, focus on eating a large health meal when, you, when you're hungry. And of course, you need to calculate the number of calories that you're eating as well in that very big, large meal. So focus on having, like, for example, three meals per day, but these meals, they should be healthy. And also, because you're saying don't eat when you're not, do not starve yourself. Because starving yourself will make you um, make unhealthy food choices. You'll be like, why am I starving myself? You pass by a grocery store and then you shop all, all, all the bad foods and eat them just because you're hungry. So do not let yourself go into that kind of starvation mode. If you're doing so, that's also wrong. So you need to grab yourself a snack so that you can keep yourself um, full a little bit, not hungry. Mm-hmm. If you're still in the house, if you're still in the house, please let's have some chat. Let's have some chat. I need to see you active. I need to know that you are here. <laughs> Lydia is saying, I agree with you, but sometimes it's not very tricky because when you're not busy, you can't avoid. Mm. So if you cannot avoid snacking, please make healthy choice snacks. For example, you can have an apple, you can just have a, a simple fruit, you understand? Instead of you snacking with ice cream, snacking with um, pastas, snacking with um, a burger, snacking something, have healthy snacks. You can have a protein shake, you can have a smoothie, and you know, go with that. But the people tend to snack with unhealthy foods, which have a lot of calories, and it would be hard for you to create a correct deficit if that's how you are eating all the time. So please focus on eating when you're, uh, when you're hungry. If you're not hungry, please. If you're just simply um, um, not busy and you want to be taking something, get something to drink, be veggie drink, like coffee, tea, green tea, such kind of stuff that do not contain a lot of calories. I mean, I'm not saying don't eat anything. But for example, Lydia, instead of focusing on eating all these processed snacks, focus on taking your coffee, your green tea, your water, such kind of stuff. Protein shake, whey shake, focus on such kind of stuff and leave the processed foods alone that contain calories. Mm. Then the last one, I think this is the last one. Please. Some people, they fail to lose weight because they have set unrealistic goals. Some people really are thinking, I'm going to lose 50 pounds of weight in just one month or two. So that one does not really look realistic. I know you having the goal to be weight loss and health related is the biggest motivation for you, but it actually might be working against you. So please, can you stop focusing on those unrealistic goals? I mean, if you, for example, want, if you're 200 pounds and you want to lose weight, focus on, for example, losing 10% of that weight in just a year. And you find yourself actually losing more than that before the year ends. But if you think you're going to lose 10% of 200 pounds in just a month, that is so unrealistic and you're going to get devastated, you're going to get frustrated, you're going to feel dejected, and at the end of the day, you will quit your weight loss program. So please focus on having realistic goals. I mean, don't focus on the friend. Um, you might be having a friend of yours who is not in shape, they have small waist, they have muscle definition, everything, but you have no idea how long it took them to get where they are. You understand what I'm saying? First of all, you need to appreciate what you are right now and then love where you are going. So if you don't appreciate who you are right now and then you want to appreciate yourself when you reach somewhere, trust me, it's not going to be easy for you. So appreciate what you are right now, having realistic goals that will make you keep consistent and not giving up. Right? So, 
those are main mistakes, 12 mistakes that most people that I've seen commit and they're not seeing results out of their weight loss journey despite putting all the efforts into some weight. Mm. I still have four amazing people in the house. Thanks so much for sticking around. Thanks so much for sticking around. If you have any questions about what I've said, please feel free to comment, feel free to react to what I've talked about, and let's have a chat together. Um, if there's anyone who has joined, we can just go back and then recap for them and they write these tips here or these mistakes so that they don't commit them. It's okay being sure, it's okay. As long as it's about your body goals, your fitness goals, your health goals in, a, in general, it's okay, ask, 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 ask. That's why I'm here. Actually, if you're wondering, guys, um, I'm still at my workplace. I'm actually still in the hospital, so I can answer this. I'm still at work, being sure. I'm still at work. Huh. Damn, what's up? How you doing, bro? Thanks for joining in. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. Though you missed um, the topics a little bit. Oh, you're asking, do weight trainers work? Being sharp. Thanks for that great question. Sharp. Sharp. If you've been duped somewhere that weight, weight trainers work, please, please, they never. They never. I mean, you see what happens is people will tend to use your ignorance. People you tend to use that you are not informed in a certain kind of sector to dupe you and make money out of you. But trust me, these weight trainer, um, waist trainers, supplements, what those kind of stuff they actually do not work. You need to focus on what we have discussed here for you to start seeing results. I mean, you're going to go on market by these supplements. By this, for example, vibrators. I see people using vibrators when they want to get a six pack. Who tells you that a vibrator will help you get a six pack? No. Someone's out there and they're thinking, how do I make money out of this? By saying this to people who actually do not understand what happens. And those are some of the things that we are here to debunk, right? So, being sure, focus on creating a caloric deficit for you to lose weight for you to get a small waist. One thing that you need to understand is you cannot um, spot fat reduction. You can't wake up one day and you're like, I need a small waist, I need to lose fat on my bed. Your body does not work like that. Your body, that's not how it works. You don't tell it, I want to lose fat on my arms, and then it, it does so. No. When you start a weight loss journey, you have to lose fat, the entire body, including that's the point that you're trying to target. So someone who tells that waist trainers work, I mean, I already see people doing a lot of um, useless sit-ups, a lot of ab training. I mean, it's not about you training your abs directly. Yes, you need to train the abs to get a little bit of definition because abs are like any other muscle, a waist is like, has muscles like any other part of the body. Of course, for them to grow, you need to train them. But if you have a high fat body percentage covering those abs, but if you do million sit-ups, you're still not going to see results. So at the end of the day is you must focus on losing um, the body fat first before you focus even on training your abs. So one thing you need to know, abs, they can be built in the gym, but they are, they are revealed in the kitchen or they are uncovered in the kitchen. So if you go and train your abs and then when you reach home, you, you eat like a thief, trust me, you're not going to see results at the end of the day. So please, waist trainers being shown, there's nothing like that that you're going to use it and it's going to work. If you're not watching your nutrition, aiming at creating a collective deficit by eating protein, eating fiber, and so many things that we've talked about, please, no one should lie you that those things are going to work. And guys, you need to remember one thing, is when you incorporate all this, just be consistent and be patient. Everything will come so easily. Oh, 
Oh, done. Yes, I actually have one video that um, I'll be uploading within this week because so many people have been asking me such kind of um, questions. People ask people DM me, people calling me, and I find it very hard to explain to everyone in detail. So um, <clears throat> I made a video that I'll be uploading this week. I shot that video and it entails almost everything that they need. So Dan, you can, what you need to know, just link them to me, let them subscribe to this channel, share with them the link of this channel so they can subscribe, turn on the notification so that they get notified whenever I upload this video. So I'm going to upload it within next week or this week already, in, we're already in the new week so that they do not miss on it. Or they can DM me directly and then we can also have a chat about it. So being sure, that's it, that's it. No one should tell you that um, most trainers will help you take out your body fat. No, no one should tell you that. Your fat is not going anywhere as long as you do not eat in a correct deficit or you do not create a correct deficit at all. And sometimes I even do not care which kind of foods you eat. Of course, eating healthy food is the best. But as long as you're able to create a correct deficit in one way or the other, trust me, you're going to lose that very fat because your body is like you want, it's like you have water on a swimming pool. I've said this on this channel. You have water on in a swimming pool and you want to get water at the bottom. So how do you get water at the bottom without getting the water on top? Does that make some sense? So you have, when you start losing weight, you have to lose weight starting from your face, you go to your arms, you go to your chest, you go to your abs, you go to your legs. So that's how it works. That's why direct up training, if you have high fat body percentage, it's going to help you. That's why those waste trainers, they are simply useless. Mm -hmm. <sighs> if you're still in the house and you have any other question, please let me know. If you're still in the house and you have any other question, let me know, let me know, let me know right now. And if you've just joined and you want to know what you've talked about, please, 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 please. I can recap for you. If you just joined and you're in the house, let me know so that I can go back and recap everything for you. Because as people I see here, they've been in the house ever since we started. So which means they've been up speed with me. Still have four amazing, three amazing people in the house. If you have any question, if you're still around, say something, say something. If you're still around, say something, say something. So being child, hope I answered your question, right? Hope I answered your question. Please focus on the thing that we've talked about. Trust me, losing weight is going to be a myth. It's going to be history. Losing weight is going to be history, but your waist trainers, those, those are just myths and people are just trying to make some money. People are just simply trying to make some money. So we have to let people understand this so that they are not duped. I mean, someone goes there and makes some um, a crappy supplement that when you take this one, you will lose fat. In. You can't, for example, you can't, you, don't, you can't get abs in two weeks. Who tells you that? Hmm? You can't lose all the fat that you have in just two weeks. Your body doesn't work that way. Even if you are not eating anything for two weeks, you wouldn't still get abs in two weeks, but you see people... You will still, you're going to see a lot of videos on YouTube saying how to get abs in a week. But in reality, you can't get abs in a week. So some people will do some of the things for views. Some people will do some of the things to make money. But at the end of the day, the reality stays. And here we're talking about body physiology. You can't change body physiology. You're not God. You can't change how your body functions. So it's very important that you focus on the reality other than the lies. But 
how do you support the reality? That's why you need to come here. So basically here, we're going to be talking about how your body um, responds to everything, how your body reacts to your weight loss, your muscle loss, everything that you need to know about that. That's what we're going to focus on. So we are debunking all the myth out there. We are debunking all the lies. So that's why you need to keep locked on this channel. So yes, we might be doing this, you know, to be successful on YouTube, get the views, but at the end of the day, we, we, we tend to deliver information that is actually the real truth. Zanzan, what's up? You're lost. Gana, wambula ko bubi nyo, mkuno nya. Zanzan, mkuno nya, mbubi nyo nya guwa soka. How you doing? How you doing? How is UK? How is everything? All people are doing fine. It's about um, 5 p.m. right here in Uganda. I think you get about 3 p.m. right. Are you out of the field? Are you from the field already? Or you're just home? It's a Sunday, you're relaxing. So Zanzan, we've been having an interesting topic. I know you're someone who's passionate about workouts, fat loss, and everything. And we've been basically discussing the fat loss mistakes that people me that people are doing that you know hinder that are hindering their weight loss journey and trust me um it's been an amazing session but um if you're interested i can just recap everything for you to just come up to speed with us so one was focusing on the scale weight because we said your body <clears throat> Your body can hold on to so much water while you're exercising, you're building some mass. That is why estrogen tend to hold on so much water. So you shouldn't focus on the figure that you're seeing on your scale. You should focus on your, uh, on your abdominal girth. You should focus on how tight your clothes um, were and how are they now. You should focus on your pictures, but you do not focus on that figure that you're seeing on the scale, because there are so many factors that can influence that figure. One, food that you have taken and digested food, the beverages that you have taken during that day, all those ones will affect the weight that you see on the scale. So please focus on measuring yourself using a tape measure and focus on the pictures that you take in the mirror every morning, every month. Such kind of stuff will work for you. If you focus on that figure, you will see no change, you will hate the whole process and end up quitting and I don't want you to quit. Number two, we said you're either eating too less or too many calories. Too less calories, of course, they will slow down your metabolism and of course, you will stop losing weight. A lot of calories, too many calories will put you in a surplus and being in a surplus, you can't lose weight, you instead gaining fat. Or if you are a trainer, you're gaining muscle. If you're, if you're an active person in the gym, you're gaining muscle in a surplus. You're not actually losing fat. So please, 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 make sure that you create a calorie deficit, but do not go beyond 500 calories per day, which makes 3,500 calories per week, which will make you lose about one pound of, um, of weight per week. Mm -hmm. Number three was, you're either not exercising at all or you're exercising too much. Not exercising at all is bad because as you lose all the fat, it goes along with the muscle. So for you to maintain your muscle mass, you need to exercise. Exercise builds muscle. So please, and also we said muscle is metabolically active. So the more muscle you have in your body, the higher, the faster your metabolism, which means you're even burning more calories and you're creating more caloric density which will be easier for you to lose weight. But on top of that, building some muscle in you will keep you with the definition. So you don't want to lose fat and just then look skinny without, you know, without any muscle mass on you. Then you say the exercising lot is bad because number one, it puts your body under stress, which means your stress hormone cortisol is flying and this will hinder your adrenal glands, which produce the counter-regulatory hormones, I mean, the hormones that will help you regulate the stress, which means your body will be, stress, um, will be under stress all the time because of exercise, and of course, it will do the opposite. Instead of losing fat, you actually gain fat. So please make sure you exercise, but do not exercise more than enough. Then we said, another one was, you're not eating enough protein. We said protein, first of all, is so feeling, 
your protein, um, uh, protein um, stimulates your satiety hormones, like uh, glucagon, like peptide one, stuff like protein Y, Y. These are satiety hormones that basically tend to stop eating. That's why when you have had a large protein meal, you're not feeling hungry for some time compared to when you've just had um, a, just, um, a carbohydrate meal or just a processed carbohydrate meal or anything. So that's why protein is good. But we said on top of that, your body needs to lose a lot of calories to digest protein. Uh, basically, we call that thermic effect. So proteins have a high thermic effect. So you're eating calories, but at the same time, you're breaking down calories to digest the protein. And we're saying your, your 20 to 35% of the calories they have eaten, they go back to just digesting protein only, which means you'll be burning calories even when you're asleep. So burning calories when you're, when you're asleep, you're creating a caloric deficit that you need to lose weight without even you realizing. So that's why protein is good. But on top of that, protein helps maintain your muscle mass because for you to keep with some muscle, you need protein, you need amino acids. So that's why protein is good. Mm. Then we also say that you not tracking what you're eating in any way. For you, you're just simply eating, even if you're eating healthy foods, but they have calories. So they might be having more calories that you actually need to lose weight. So you might be eating healthy meals, yes, but because you're not watching the portion sizes, you're basically in a caloric surplus. You think you're eating in a deficit or you think you're eating healthy to lose weight, but you're eating a lot. So at the end of the day, it goes down to creating a calorie deficit. Whether you're eating healthy, you might be eating healthy, but you're eating more than enough. So you need to focus on watching your portion sizes of what you're eating of the healthy foods. So we say there are so many online websites, so many online, uh, or so many apps that can help you um, track what you're eating. Uh, this, uh, you, uh, you simply enter your information and then the apps will generate all the information that you need to know for you. Then another one is you're overestimating how many calories you're burning during exercise. Some people think I'll eat whatever you want as long as I go to the gym or as long as I exercise. So, I mean, yes, exercise is very important, but it does not burn more calories than you actually think. It does not burn all those calories than that you actually think, you think you're burning um, tens of thousands of calories per week because you're exercising. No, exercise will burn some calories, yes, but if you don't watch the calories that you're taking in, it all be going to be bullshit at the end of the day, not going to see results. So please, yes, do exercise, but shouldn't be your focus burn calories or expend calories watch the cards you're taking in rather than you taking them in and then you wait to suffer with burning them, right? Mm -hmm. Then we say the other one is you having unrealistic goals, thinking that your body will change within a flash. Think that you've been at maybe a 30% body fat and you will wake up tomorrow and be at 15% um, body fat. No. So we are saying that create realistic goals. Say if you're fat, you want to change, you want to see change in your body, you want to see your six pack, you want to see your small waist. If you're 200 pounds, you want to see a 10% of that drop within, um, within six months or a year. Instead of thinking that you're going to lose tons of fat in just a month or two. So that will make you drop out of the program and you will hit the the process. So you need to trust the process, be patient, be con consistent, and everything will come so easily. Mm -hmm. Then you're saying another mistake is people eating even when they're not hungry. I mean, all the time for you, you think to boost your metabolism, you need to be eating small meals every time. And then by these small meals, they contain a lot of calories. Moreover, you're taking their snacks, which are highly processed, which contain empty calories, so which means there's no way how you can create a caloric deficit when you're snacking all the time. We are saying focus on about three meals per day, but there should be healthy meals and do not eat when you're not hungry. 
Why would you eat when you're not hungry? Simply because you have the money to buy the food or simply because the food is available. I don't really think if you really want to lose weight, you should be eating all the time, even when, you, even when you're not hungry. But at the same time, do not starve yourself. You are saying instead, if you have snacks, focus on having healthy snacks, focus on having maybe an apple, a fruit, um, it could be a, a protein shake like whey, such kind of stuff so that you do not starve yourself because it's also bad to make you instead make unhealthy food choices and you start binge eating now. So please, if you don't eat all the time, just focus on eating when you're hungry and it's a success to fat loss or weight loss. The another one is you're, you're either eating low fat foods. So you're saying however much you need to lose weight, please. You need to focus on eating high fat foods, high healthy fats, because I mean, when I was still in medical school, I was told that we have essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. We have essential fats and we have the bad fats, but I was never told that you actually have essential carbohydrates. Yes, however much carbohydrates, you need them for your energy. But the good thing is your body is able to actually make some carbohydrates from non-carbohydrate sources. That's why you're not saying there's something like an essential carbohydrate. So please um, limit um, low-fat foods and processed foods because they contain a lot of calories and to be hard for it to create a caloric deficit. So focus on eating minimally processed foods, high nutrition for high nutritious foods instead of you eating low-fat foods and then processed foods. Um, then we said another point was you not lifting weights. I mean, you lifting weights is good because it builds some muscle on you. And what they said, muscle is highly metabolically active, which will help you even burn more calories, but you also create a definition and everything is going to just um, look interesting for you. So if you, you've started on a weight loss journey, please, don't hesitate to incorporate some weights in your program. You need to incorporate some weights in your program. Um, yum, yum. Zan Zan is finally here. She passed by today. She passed by today. So please, you need to lift some weights, some few, I mean, a few, uh, few times a week, like two to three. If you have no access to weights, you can do push-ups, you can do squats, you can do such kind of, uh, any kind of strength training, but as long as it puts a lot of strain on your muscles, it's able to boost muscle growth. So please do not take it for granted. So those are major, the main mistakes that I see most people commit. And then when they don't see results, they hit all the process, they think they're doing everything right, but they're actually not doing everything right. They are doing these mistakes. So if they could focus on eliminating such kind of mistakes, this people would be seeing incredible results. Oh, fitness study training, are you live? Let me know, are you live right now? Are you live or oh, you're just doing a premiere? Let me check you out if you're doing a premier. Um, fitness study, what's happening on your channel right now? Are you going live? Oh, you are premiering. You are premiering. Okay, fine. Let me pass by. Let me pass by my brother. Let me pass by. So my brother is, is um, premiering a video. If, um, if you're able to check him out, please, please go and check him out. I, I, I've seen you already premiered your video about an hour ago, right? Maybe if there's some other video that you're premiering, if there's other video that you're premiering, please, I'll check it out. But also, um, I'll check out your, your video that you uploaded one hour ago as well after my live stream. I'll definitely do that. But if you're still in the house and you have any question, please, please, please 
that mineral right now so that we can have an interaction. The topic is done. Hope you guys, you, you had the people where we are writing this so that you don't forget. Or if the LS is done and is uploaded, you can just go back and revisit and get all the points. in the house let's have some child let's talk let's talk let's talk let's talk other uh, guys i appreciate you that you are here there are some people who never miss my live stream those people you need medals i love you so much i love you so much I appreciate you beyond measure. Mm -hmm. I still have four people amazing in the house. They have four people in the house. I still have four amazing people in the house. If you have any question for me, please, please drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. Drop the question, drop the question. Um, we are just one 20 minutes in the stream. Just one 20 minutes. We still have about 40 minutes. This is supposed to be a two hour live stream. That's why I'm, the, time, the time that is remaining, um, I just want to answer your question, uh, your questions, your reactions, and have fun together here. So if you're in the house and you have any question, please, please let me know or let me know that you are here. I give you a shout out. Let me know that you're here. I give you a shout out. Shout out your questions I've answered. <laughs> I've answered your question. Okay. So you have no questions, but... Thanks for coming today. I appreciate you. Zan Zan, Zan Zan. What's up? What's up? What's up? Any question about Lord weight loss? I know you're kind of someone who's really passionate about this. Please, please let me know what you need to, to, to know or let us um let us discuss something. Let, let me know what we can talk about right now. That if it's been burning about fitness, that you really need us to talk about it. <laughs> so Zanzan, you're trying, you're trying hard to eliminate carbs. Um, Zanzan, yes, I, I, I know, I, I understand what you're saying. Of course, some people it's hard to eliminate carbs completely because carbs are um they're at our disposal. But now the problem you're eating biscuits, you're not eating oats, you're not eating stuff like brown rice, you're not eating um um sweet potatoes you're simply eating biscuits so when you buy for your kid you end up taking also but um how is your weight are you kind of someone who has a weight loss goal or you're simply just there they are trying to eat health health you don't basically have any body goals or weight loss goals and also last time we said that sometimes no one is perfect. When you try to eat 100% perfect, you're mostly going, um, going to quit because you cannot, you cannot eat 100% perfect. But focus on 80% perfect, 20% enjoying your favorite foods. So if you're eating a biscuit, but it takes like 20% of, what, of your diet, I don't think it has a problem for you. But the problem is, Went to the vice versa. <laughs> so 
So your body gives up after three weeks. The problem is when you try to cut out carbohydrates in general, you can't do that because one thing, carbohydrates is a primary source of energy for your body. Basically, glucose. Every cell in your body uses glucose. Your brain, your heart, your muscle, your, your nerves, your everything, any living cell in the world uses glucose. But the good thing, your body can, you can get glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. But at the same time, if you're kind of someone who has been eating a lot of um, sugary foods, I'm talking about uh, fructose. The, I, I have a whole LS talking about fructose. Um, that is um, foods which have a lot of fruct- uh, uh, fructose corn syrup. They are very high in fructose corn syrup. If you're taking foods which have a lot of table sugar, I mean added sugar, we say that fructose, the problem with fructose is fructose is addictive. Fructose is not glucose. Um, zan, zan. Fructose is not glucose. Fructose is actually what makes sweet things, um, sweet things sweet. So fructose is what is found in honey. Fructose is what is found in, um, in table sugar. Fructose is what is found in fruits. Fructose is um, in so many, in so many products. And the reason why they put fructose is it's that sweet. The reason why most people find it hard to, uh, to go away from sugar is because fructose does not provide energy to your body. Fructose instead um, stimulates your limbic system um, that controls your emotions, that controls your cravings. So basically fructose is addictive. I mean, if you look at drugs like cocaine, marijuana, fructose acts like them, like the, 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 something in the brain, one part of the brain that uh, those drugs activate, fructose does the same. I mean, your hypothalamus in the brain, your basal ganglia in the brain, your cerebrum in the brain, they do not, doesn't use fructose at all. But when you take fructose, it gives you that calming effect that you feel good and without it, can't do anything. So that's why some people find it very hard to abstain from carbohydrates, especially the sweet ones. But complex carbohydrates, I mean, as long as you're watching portion sizes, they're not bad. They're not bad, especially those ones which contain a lot of fiber. They're not bad. So if you're trying to send a lot of complex carbohydrates, you still need them. I mean, you need to be, for example, if you're doing some exercise like me, if you're, if you're very active, you need to replenish your glycogen all the time. So glycogen is like, um, it's, a, it's, it's a, a glucose store. It's a store for glucose. So the excess glucose that you're eating, that's coming in, that's used for energy, or store does glycogen, or store does fat. So when you start exercising, you're breaking down your glycogen to provide you with the energy. So the reason why complex carbs are good, they are good at replenishing the, carbo- uh, the glycogen stores so that when you need, you need the sugar, the glycogen stores are fed and they give you all the sugar. So when you don't do that, then you are going to affect your energy. Your energy is going to be affected. So Zanzana, I understand complex carbs, but um, if you're having a problem with simple carbs, I would advise you start getting them out of your diet um, gradually. Do not wake up one day and just cut them off for weeks because you're going to get a lot of cravings. I mean, because it's addictive, you get what we call with the drug symptoms. So because we said, take drug, I mean, sugar is a drug, sugar is a toxin. So when you're withdrawing it from your body because it has been used to eat, you tend to get with the draw symptoms, you even feel a lethargic headache and all that, all that kind of stuff. But this, uh, these effects, these with the draw symptoms that short live, they can be there for like one week or two. So if you can resist that, then after that, you're going to be okay. Even I myself, I still take out of um, comp- uh, simple carbohydrates. But the moment I made the choice to stop, I got those with the drug symptoms, but now I'm fine. I don't even think about sugar. I don't think about biscuits. I don't think about um, such kind of stuff. Beverages, um, those processed beverages. I just do not miss them. You understand? So 
you it's about understanding the whole process and trusting the process and of course you have to make some sacrifices everything doesn't come on a silver plate you have to make some few sacrifices here and there for you to see some results Hmm, I still have four amazing people in the house. I still have four amazing people in the house. I appreciate that you're still here. I still have four amazing people in the house. There are four amazing people in the house. If you have any question, let me know, let me know, let me know, let me know. So, you guys, what you need to know is um, if you want, you need carbs, but make sure that um, you are taking you're making the right choices for carbohydrates. So the complex carbs, I'm happy that Zanza, you're actually taking your complex carbohydrates. Fructose, fructose is a toxin, you people, because the way your body metabolizes alcohol as a toxin, it's the same way it metabolizes fructose. And fructose, first of all, it has been researched that it causes a lot of um, AGEs, there's something we call advanced <clears throat> glycated end products, where you get fructose um, um, combined it with stuff like proteins and all that, and they combine together without any um, enzymatic action. And this one, they go and deposit in your vessels. That's why you end up with stuff like um, hypertension. I mean, you basically end up with a metabolic syndrome. So fructose has been researched to actually cause a, a metabolic syndrome that has diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemias, kidney disease, and all that. So please, Fructose is very, 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 very bad. That's why simple carbohydrates that have a lot of added fructose, they are terrible, 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 terrible for you. So if you've just joined us, please, please let me know that you've come in so that I can give you a shout out, so that I can know that you're here. And um, ask any questions if you have any and let's jump together, let's groove together. If you see now, and you have any question, feel free to drop it, drop it in the chat so that I can answer directly for you. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for sticking to my house. Thanks for being in my house and for keeping around. If I've answered your questions, let me know. If you still have any questions, let me know also, so that I can answer directly for you. That's why we are here. If you still have any questions about the topic, CEO mindset, what's up? Let's come. <laughs> Let's come always, it burns. But nevertheless, you are here. I appreciate you. Hi, how are you doing? Hope you're doing great. Hope from the title, we've talked a lot. We've talked a lot. We've talked a lot about mistakes that you might be committing while trying to lose weight or trying to lose some fat. But if you have any question, please, please feel free to drop it down and I'll answer directly. I'll answer directly for you. Oh, you're from another life. I understand. I understand the hustle and the struggle. I see you. I understand. But any questions, CEO mindset, let me know. 
Mm-hmm. <sighs> oh, wow. So you want to lose weight at the same time. You want to lose belly fat at the same time, add some weight. Wow, what an interesting question. So that's what something we call body recomposition. I, I don't know, we've never met like person in person, but um, what's your current weight? What's your current weight? Do you only have a belly fat or you generally fat the entire body? Let me know, talk to me your mindset. What is your latest, that's time you weighed yourself, how many kilograms, how many pounds? So do you want, to, because if you say you want to gain weight, there are two ways. You can gain weight the bad way, you can weight, gain weight the good way. The bad way is when you're trying to gain weight, but you're putting on a lot of um, fat instead of muscle. And um, some people have seen, yeah, you're just 53. Okay, let me do come to the first finish CEO mindset. So you're just 53 kgs. So you're 53 kgs, but you want to have a fat tummy. Do you want, so because if you start losing weight, if you start, I mean, if you want a fat tummy, Trust me, you have to lose some weight. But if you want to maintain the weight, but add a, but um, get a fat tummy, you will need to train. That's one thing. So exercising will help you, one thing, maintain your muscle mass or add some muscle mass on you so that your weight is maintained. Then losing fat, because as you lose fat, you should be replacing it with muscle. Because now if you're 53 and you want a fat tummy, when you start losing weight, you, um, I mean, you'll be losing fat, but if you're not exercising, if you're not eating right, if you're not eating enough protein, you're going to find yourself in um, 45, 46. And um, some people, of course, they don't want that kind of weight. So you're saying you want a six pack. Yes, you can get a six pack, but you should focus on things. So for you to maintain your weight or what we call body recomposition, focus on strength training. And I talked about it here. Focus on doing some resistance training. If you can lift some weights, if you can do those squats, you know, to maintain some mass on your ass or on your glutes, if you can get some simple dumbbells to just, you know, turn your arms and um, and um, of course do some, some hit training. I mean, do some uh, resistance training. For example, if you can do some cardio here and there. So as you lose fat, you know, you're building some muscle. Then as you, because a six pack will not come from you training directly. The moment you lose fat the entire body, you see a six pack coming by itself without you even trying to train it directly. But for ladies, sometimes you think that um, you will get broken abs like us the men, but it's hard for you to get that. I mean, genetically, there's something that makes you look a woman and um, that's hormonal. So that's why some, some women, despite having a lo- the lowest fat body percentage, they do not have the six pack like how men are. You understand what I'm saying? But you will get a fat tummy. So one thing you need to focus on is we said greater caloric deficit. The moment you eat right, the moment you stop your junk, your processed food and focus on eating whole plant-based foods, then if it's animal foods, you're eating meat once in a while, then if you, you're involved in bringing some um, dairy products or eating like, for example, Greek yogurt, which is very nutritious and has a lot of protein, stuff like whey protein, those things, I mean, you will end up with a six pack as long as you've created a caloric deficit. But you said, for you not to lose all the muscle mass, you need to keep training, you need to exercise so that your metabolism is maintained so that you're not losing definition after losing the fat. So, see your mindset. You can get a fat tummy, but you need to sacrifice some things. I mean, you need to get rid of you. You need to put Cafe Java and KFC on the side and focusing on, um, on your massacre food, focusing on your food from the village. That's what's going to help you lose some weight and lose some that very fat. But also, 
if you're doing some training, I wouldn't say focus on training your, your time directed because that's the mistake most people do when we are saying that there's nothing like sport fat reduction. If you start losing fat, you're going to lose fat the entire body, including that, the sport that you're trying to target. So if you're trying to target the, the belly, you will end up losing fat even from your arms, even from your face, even from, you know, at the end of the day, your belly fat will also go. But you can't say me, I'm going to lose belly fat so that your body poses fat, lose, um, poses fat loss in other areas. So when you start losing fat, you're going to lose fat the entire body. That's what I can tell you. So focus on creating a caloric deficit by eating 500 calories less than what you, less than your, your maintenance calories. If your maintenance calories are 500 calories, I mean 2,500 calories, then aim at eating 2,000 calories so that you create a deficit of about 500 calories. And of course, the body will tend to compensate for that by burning fat, providing more calories to keep maintaining your best metabolic rate. Mm. Do I answer your question, CEO? Mine, So the young media asking, does well it help to lose weight in any way? Who tells you that? Okay, I'll say this. I've covered, I've done so many videos in the past about alcohol. But I want to say this. One, alcohol has empty calories. That's number one. So if you want to lose weight, of course, you need to be a hungry deficit. And if you're taking alcohol, it has some calories, which are even empty that the body doesn't need. But on top of that, your body, alcohol boosts your metabolism. That's very true. Alcohol boosts your metabolism, but it should be a little bit that boosts your metabolism. Some people, when you binge you drink, that's why after drinking, after having some bottles, you feel you're energetic, you feel you can box someone, you can fly over the a study building, you, that's when you get the guts so of, you know, even approaching people, that's when you get confidence. The reason for that is um, alcohol boosts your metabolism. Of course, when your metabolism is boosted, then you're burning calories. I mean, um, alcohol we take, we, because it's a, it's a toxin, your body has to work harder to remove the toxin. So that's why your body will tend to, uh, to boost its metabolism. So what will end up happening is you'll be able to actually burn some calories. That's why most people who are more dependent on um, that cold waraji, most of them, they're actually skinny. Most of them, um, they are even a caloric deficit because their body, is always um, trying to emit the toxin all the time. So their metabolism is ever high. They're ever burning calories. So we, they cannot gain weight compared to beers and, and wastes, which are basically have a lot of um, calories in them. Wine, some wines which have a lot of calories in them. So that's why, yes, you might think, if you look at the benefit of taking waraji compared to the side effect, mm, you didn't want to focus on the benefit because the benefit is just something small. Yes, you're not gaining weight, but you're drinking your liver. So would you want to drink your liver out? No. Because the moment the liver crashes, you're no more. So yes, it does help you burn some calories and can create a caloric deficit, but you're drinking your liver. And another thing is the moment your liver fails, that's the end. Because all the metabolism, everything happens in the liver. So that when the liver starts getting weak and it fails, then it's going to be hard for you um, to lose weight. So at the initial stages, you'll be burning calories because the body is focusing on removing all the toxins from your body from alcohol. The other aldehydes that come from metabolizing alcohol, all of them, your liver will tend to work 100 times harder remove such kind of toxins and that's why you'd be burning calories which you might end up in uh, if you're not taking in a lot you end up losing weight so that's very true alcohol can actually make you lose some weight um, but not other types of alcohol some alcohols contain a lot of um, calories especially the beers and everything they contain a lot of calories so however much you are, your body is trying to um, to remove the toxins, but you're giving it a lot of calories to, to, to use. But Walaji, what, red wine, those ones, they contain a few calories. 
But also, I also said in the video about red wine, why red wine is very good for you because it tends to, uh, um, it tends to increase your brown fat and brown fat is what burns more calories compared to the white fat. But of course, too much of it because it contains calories, it will take away all the positive effects and now the bad effects of it will come up. So hopefully you have made the answer your question. Hope you're answered. So taking alcohol, um, for example, if you're taking mildly that your body can handle, I think that's very okay. But the problem is when you're binge drinking, that's when you start getting the bad side effects of alcohol. So focus on focus on um, on mild drinking. But if I were you, the only thing I would choose. I would choose red wine compared to all other alcoholic beverages. Mm, I still have six amazing people in the house. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Say something, say something. You have 15 minutes to the end of LS. So we are one hour and 45 minutes in and we are ending at two hours. So we have 15 minutes remaining. If you're still in the house, let me know that you're in the house. Let me know that you're in the house. And if you have not given me a thumbs up, please, please, you're late. Give me that thumbs up right now. So see you, man. So saying this is quite informative. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. If you're in the house, if you're in the house. Let's go. It's still in the house. If it's still in the house and you have a question, please let's not end this LS when I have not answered your question. I really want to answer all your questions. for amazing people in the house. For amazing people in the house. Any questions, let's roll. If you still have something that you want me to talk about. So I'll go through, I'll recap what, what we discussed today, the topic, the mistakes, so that um, you guys, if you're still in the house and you have something to write, you write these ones. One, 
stop focusing on the figure on the weight scale. Two, start doing some exercise, but do not exercise a lot. Three, do not eat too many or too low calories. Four, do some weightlifting or strength training. Five, those people who do not eat enough protein, please eat some adequate protein. Six, stop eating when you're not, uh, when you're not hungry. It's not written anywhere that you must take breakfast. Seven, have, you, have realistic goals. Six, um, I mean eight, um, you, need to take, uh, you need to take fiber. Then nine, eating, uh, stop eating um, low, car, uh, low dirty foods or low fat foods. Then 10, mm. if you're still in the house, please, please let me know that you're in the house and hope you're writing this because I don't want you to forget them. 10, not tracking what you're eating in any way. 11, overestimating the calories you burn during exercise. Then exercise is not, um, exercise is not the end of it all. Exercise actually gives about 50, um, 20 to 25% of all the results. So please, 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 please don't think exercise is burning 100,000 of calories. 12, be, if you're not patient, be patient, be patient, be patient. And be consistent, be consistent, be consistent. Or if you have anything that you want me to talk about, maybe in my next uh, live stream, if you have a topic that you don't understand and you want me to come and talk about it, it might be health related or fitness related. I'll definitely schedule time and come and we talk about that. So we have about nine minutes to the end of our live stream. If you have any question and I haven't attended to it, please, please, I don't want to live with a debt. I don't want to live with a debt. Just let me know. Someone has just joined us. Please, if you joined us, let me know that you are here. Let me know that you are here. And of course, give me that amazing thumbs up. Give me that amazing thumbs up. See how farmers in the house.
six minutes to the end of the LS. If you haven't answered your question, please, please just join us. Let me know that you're in the house. I'll give you a shout out. Want to give you a shout out if you're still in the house. So there's some people who have been here ever since I started. For now, two hours, you people, I cannot take you for granted. I appreciate your support. I appreciate for keeping rocked here on my channel for all the two hours. I thank you so much. I thank you so, so, so much. And in case, guys, if you want any of my merchandise, if you want these t-shirts, if you want my jumpers, they are all available. Just find me on Instagram, Girls Fitness, and we talk. We talk. And of course, I'll be giving out some giveaways. So please, please, just keep rocked, keep rocked, keep rocked, keep rocked here. Yeah. And if you love... Our logo, if you have a t shirt, please also let me know on the chat right now. Feel free to let me know. Three minutes to the end of the live stream, guys. Three minutes to the end of the live stream. As you are the winners, you are the true winners for hanging out with me and trusting me. If I have any unanswered question, please let me know right now. I feel that I'm still here, man. Thanks for checking me through. Thanks for hanging around. So, finished I saw you are monetized, right? You are monetized channel. I just found that um, found, uh, found that out yesterday or yesterday, but one. Because as if I saw some ads running, running on your on your channel. Yes, yes, yes. I saw that. I saw that, bro. I, I mean, we need to, we need to give you the views. We need to watch those ads, man, to maximize your revenue, bro. So that's why I count on me every time. I always um, jump on your uploads every time, and then, and um, um, you tell me you're based in Ireland. Um, or, or Australia, if I vividly really remember. Ireland or Australia? That's if I remember. Oh, yes, yes. Now I vividly really remember that, bro. So, me, I'm based in Uganda, Africa, East Africa, so, but I'm happy to connect with you, bro. How is everything? So yeah, Ireland is like your origin. I mean, that's where you were born from. Like that's your home country, or you you just went there.
Oh, you African man, bro. Yeah, peace, man. Black life, black life, black life always. So, guys, allow me end this live stream. I just have some videos to edit. I'm going to just um, edit on those videos. Be ready for every video, um, every upload on every Friday. Be ready for an upload every Friday. Don't miss out. I'll be uploading every Friday. I'll be going live about two, three times per week. So, guys, thanks for coming. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate you all. Mad love. See you in my next LS. God bless.